America by 1980. Well, people were looking for a leadership change. They looked at Ford and Carter as a series of loser presidents, and people were quite disturbed by the counterculture of the 60s going into the 70s. Vietnam was a very, very disturbing time period. And then also stagflation, Iranian hostage crisis. So people look to a leadership change, and that comes with Ronald Reagan. Now, Reagan was a part of a new conservative movement called the New Right. Let me give you some characteristics of what a conservative would believe during this time period, and most of them still carry over, over to this very day. So let's start with the first two points over here. Number one, shrinking the size of the federal government and reducing spending. Okay, so by 1980, the government was spending $300 billion yearly on government programs. People said that was too much money being spent, so we're going to cut back on some of those things at the time. They also believed that civil rights legislation had gone too far, it was trampling upon the rights of the people, that the government was trampling upon the rights of the states to be able to make their own decisions. And so they attacked affirmative action, busing plans. And so the idea is, again, too much government intervention. Let's be conservative with it. Promoting family values and patriotic ideals. Um, you're going to see that m most uh, People that are part of the Republican Party to this very day, and back in those days as well, are going to identify with being a Christian. So they too were disturbed by the decline in morality of the 1970s with hippies and so forth and drug usage. And they also are going to be those that are going to speak out against the ending of school prayer, um, abortion, homosexuality, which is becoming a topic during the 80s. And so they're going to try and see what can we do to get America back on top and back to the good old days where things seem to be more moral during this time period. People like Jerry Falwell, he's an evangelist. We're going to rise up creating groups like the Moral Majority to raise thousands of dollars for uh, conservative candidates to be put into office and to go around passing out religious pieces of literature promoting family values during this time period. Also, as we look at the last two points, conservatives are looking at how exactly uh, does the government regulate business and industry? They felt like those that are in charge of the businesses and industry should make most of the decisions and not necessarily the federal government. So conservatives wanted business growth, lower taxes, and free enterprise, or freedom from the government interference in the economy. And they wanted to get America back up on top. And so strengthening the national defense, people like Reagan are going to say, why don't we build up our military, build up an arm, build up our arms, and then uh, challenge the economically challenged Soviets themselves to keep pace with us. So we'll look at that here a little bit more. So in the election of 1980, people were ready for a leadership change. And they bought onto Reagan's plan of lower taxes, less government and family values. And Reagan was able to convince many people to vote for him by asking in a debate with Jimmy Carter, are you better off than you were four years ago? And most people said, no, absolutely not. So the election was a landslide. You can see it right there. Reagan wins. So less government. Reagan believed that the national government had grown too large and needed to be downsized. So he proposed budget cuts to programs like Medicaid and welfare programs and job training programs. We're going to reduce the amount of money spent. Also, he believed in deregulation of businesses that would help stimulate business growth by reducing the power of government agencies. So he deregulation of industries and the EPA led increased competition, lower prices and access to new timber and oil resources. The downside is without as many, much government regulation, environmental hazards can be potentially a problem as well. He's also remembered for appointing four conservative judge, uh, justices to the Supreme, Supreme Court, but the most famous one was Sandra Day O'Connor, simply because she was the first female justice appointed to the Supreme Court. So Reagan had to tackle the problem of stagflation when he entered into office. What he proposed was something called Reaganomics. So by 1980, interest rates were at 20% and the value of the dollar dropped to 36 cents. So here is what Reagan proposed. It's called supply side economics. And here's how it works. So he believed the economy was suffering in the 70s because government taxes were too high and people did not have enough money to spend. So how do you get people to spend money? He proposed a 25% tax cut over three years to stimulate spending, increasing production and lowering prices.
So let's just see what happened between the years 1980 and 1985. Okay, the graph says it all. Starting with 1983, Reaganomics was starting to work, stagflation ended, and the economy started to grow. 16 million new jobs were created, unemployment fell below 6%, and inflation decreased or, to 4% at that time. So Reaganomics seemed to be working at the time. The downside of Reaganomics is the fact that it, it also involves deficit spending. They use deficit spending in order to increase our military and increase our arms. And so you see the development of new missile technology, new bombers. And the idea is to challenge the Soviets, whose economy was also really bad at the time, to try and keep pace with us by making them also spend money on military weapons as well. So that's how America was supposed to get back on top. So look at the years between 81 and 83. Five, you can see that deficit spending is the downside to Reaganomics. So uh, military spending increased, but tax revenue decreased. The government experienced massive deficits during this time period as well. So because we focused so much on building up our military at the time, there's not as many much focus on the social program. So you see an increase in school dropout rates, um, homelessness, attacks on affirmative action, and then also poverty seems to be on the increase as well. Another problem during the 80s, in the early part of the 80s, was uh, the, the lack of knowledge about AIDS during this time. It was starting to rise, but the stigma and the stereotype at the time was the only gay men got it. And the reason that is, is the first cases of AIDS started in San Francisco and in New York, and it seemed that only gay men were getting it at the time. So it got the name of the gay disease. But there's going to be a story that you'll see later on that busts the myth that only gay men can get AIDS. And I'll show you that later on. So drug usage also was on the rise in the 80s, especially with crack cocaine. And so Reagan also led the war on drugs and the Just Say No campaign because he was committed to conservative moral values during this time. So by 1984, um, Reagan is going to be a popular person he will run against Walter Mondale and a female vice presidential candidate, Geraldine Ferraro. You can see that that's also kind of a first during this time period. 1984, it's another landslide victory. The conservative coalition of voters um, also vote for Ronald Reagan. It's also going to be a landslide election. Reagan comes to power, blaming Carter for allowing America's international prestige and influence to fall. So he increased military spending and he engaged in an arms race with the Soviet Union and their economy was not doing very well. So he felt like, well, if we were to go in and challenge them without firing any shots, maybe we can cause them some harm if their economy is not doing well by forcing them to also spend money to keep up with us in a military arms race. He will have some challenges in the Middle East and in Latin America, but I will suggest to you that Ronald, what Ronald Reagan does puts the gears in motion for the fall of the Soviet Union and ultimately the end of the Cold War. Here's how it works. So trouble was brewing in Lebanon between Arabs and then the Israelis in 1982. Reagan stepped in and of course you know the United States is always going to give full support to Israel. So what does that signal and mean? Over in Iran, six U.S. Hostages, hostages were taken captive in 1983. So Reagan was worried about that. He thought, okay, we know what happens with Jimmy Carter when the Iranian hostage crisis happened and how it hurt his image. And we're in an oil rich area. We don't want to have more gas problems um, in America. So how do you manage this? Reagan does a, has an idea of no negotiation whatsoever. And you see that policy being held all the way up in, even to the Obama administration, up into the case of Bo Bergdahl, who um, was uh, supposedly taken captive by terrorists over in the Middle East when we negotiated his release um, in Afghanistan. But that was the mindset during that time period. So here's the thing that's happening in another part of the world. In Nicaragua, there, uh, there is a movement for communism that is beginning to brew at the time. So Reagan committed to fighting communism, maintaining order in Latin America. So in 1979, a communist group called the Sandinistas came to power in Nicaragua. Okay, it's troublesome because it's fairly close to the United States. So Congress um, denied Reagan's plea to help Nicaraguan counter-revolutionaries called the Contras take back power. 
Now, we had given them some aid and some help, some assistance to help fight the communist Sandinistas. But the, the Congress says no more help for the Contras, but this is what Reagan decides to do anyway. So you have six hostages in Iran. You've got the Contras fighting communism over in Nicaragua. What he does is this. The Reagan administration was going to try and kill two birds with one stone or solve both problems at the same time, if at all possible. So what the government did is they illegally sold Iran weapons in exchange for the release of the six hostages. Okay, so what do you do with the money that you gain from that? The government then gave the money from the profits of the arms sales to, uh, to Iran to anti-communist Contras in Nicaragua. So you see that the money goes over to Nicaragua. Okay, so this was uncovered in 1987 and it was called the Iran-Contra Affair, and it did a lot to damage the Reagan presidency. Plenty of people called for him to be impeached and, or, either, or either, at least to step down from office. So Reagan got on TV, said he had no knowledge of the scandal or what happened or anything like that, but the um, person that was involved with this, Oliver North, involved in the intelligence department of the Reagan administration, admitted to running the operation, took the fall, um, for the, the, the scandal that happened. And Reagan escaped from this, no problem. You're gonna watch a video on this later on. But if you think about it enough, Reagan went around Congress to get something done, which is not really the role and the job of a president. So Reagan took a very strong stance against communism and the Soviet Union. He called them the evil empire and the focus of evil in the modern world. And he sent over 500 nuclear missiles within range of Moscow to go and intimidate them. So we're talking about a president that has a, a strong backbone against what the Soviets are about at the time. And so he also had an ambitious plan called SDI. It was a massive defensive system of satellites called the Strategic Defense Initiative. Other people called it Star Wars. So what it involved was simply shooting down, the, giving the United States the ability to shoot down ICBMs fired from the Soviet Union, but from outer space. The problem with this program is SDI would have cost trillions of dollars, which we didn't have. We didn't necessarily even have the technology to be able to do that from outer space at the time. So really and truthfully, this was not a realistic thing, but it really did freak out the Soviets at the time. So as Reagan was coming to power, communist nations were beginning to face economic failure. And things were getting so bad that by 1985, Mikhail Gorbachev had taken charge of the USSR began creating some moderate reforms to save the Russian economy. And here's what I mean by that. The first thing is perestroika. He allowed moderate capitalism and uh, allowed some business and property ownership, which is new for the, for the communist people of, the, of those areas. So the second thing is glasnost. He allowed some freedom of speech and some competitive free elections as well. So the way this is gonna work is if you give these people an inch, they'll take a mile. And that's what's about to happen in the Soviet Union. Reagan and Gorbachev were able to work with each other as well. And you see that happening in 1987 when Reagan and Gorbachev signed the INF Treaty, which eliminated ICBMs in Europe, but did not eliminate all ICBMs. We still had the ability to go to war and have a nuclear holocaust as well. So by the late 1980s, communism was failing across Eastern Europe. The idea of glasnost, those free elections in perestroika, some private property ownership, became very popular in nations around um, Eastern Europe. But in 1989, probably the most famous moment was when the Berlin Wall fell. And I'm gonna get you to watch some things with that and, and research that a little bit more as to why it fell. But East Germans denounced communism and the Berlin Wall came down, big moment in Cold War history. In 1989 and 1990, Eastern European nations embraced democracy with these free elections, this whole idea of glasnost. And so they began to break apart from the Soviet Union, which catches on in um, uh, mainland Russia. In 1990, states within the Soviet Union broke off and formed new democratic nations. In 1991, the USSR dissolved and the Cold War ended. But you'll see some more of that. I got you some, doing some more uh, things go a little bit more in depth as to why that happened. So what is Reagan's legacy? You see it all right there before you. Death of the Cold War, the ending of the Berlin Wall, and finally the finishing off of the Soviet Union. It is all done. All right. I hope that that was helpful. Please let me know if you still have questions.